Hey, so I want to go over the skull bones with you, um, mainly just as a refresher. We've already talked about this in class, but um, since you're going off of just images, I thought this might help you for a little bit. So um, we have the skull here, right? So there's multiple bones that are going to make it up, and they're basically joined together by these different sutures, all right? So you can see this. Um, starting off at the front of the head, you have the frontal bone. All right, it's going to go down into the eye sockets. It has a suture that's going to separate it from the parietal bones. See so the suture right here. And if you think back to class, remember I told you that it's basically where like a woman would wear, a female would wear a headband. And so the way I think about it is, you know, when it starts getting hot, that's when we start wearing headbands. Um, it's around May. And so you, if you uh, think about Cinco de Mayo, you go out drinking, you know, with your girlfriends and you wear your headband. And so you drink Corona, it's the coronal suture. All right, so that's this one. Down the middle here, just like you have a sagittal plane, you're gonna have the sagittal suture. It separates the two parietal bones. You flip over to the back of the head. You have this lambdoid suture here. All right, so at night, when you're resting, staring at the ceiling, counting sheep, that gets boring. That lambdoid suture is resting against the pillow. But if you count baby sheep, those are lambs. So that's how I can remember that one. You have a temporal or temporal bone here. There is a suture that goes around it. And so I think squamous enormous big ears. So it's the squamous or squamous suture. If you're looking into the eyes, all right? You're gonna have several bones that make up the eye. If you think about it alphabetically from the inside of the eye coming out, you have ethmoid, lacrimal at the tear duct, the maxilla comes up, you have your nasal bone here. So it's E, L, M, N, working medial from deep to superficial. Over here, you have your sphenoid bone. On the side of the head, you also have the sphenoid bone. It's hard to detect here, but it's right there. This is known as your moth-shaped bone. You were to open up the cranial cavity. You look inside, you will see a moth. And so this area is sphenoid. This structure right here, this little car seat looking thing is where you would find your pituitary gland. And that's gonna be your cella turcica. All right, um, you have your cripiform plate here. It's gonna have olfactory foramina, where the olfactory nerves come through, the axons there. Um, occipital, so your occipital bone is back here, back of the head. It's good to know the bones because then a lot of the muscles are gonna be named after the bones. And then you also have the uh, blood vessels and, our, and nerves that get named after bones. So definitely retain this information. When you look at your zygomatic arch, right? You see this little suture here? That's gonna differentiate the temporal bone from the zygomatic bone. Your zygomatic bone is your cheekbone. So if you're on the zygomatic bone and you're in, you're in front of the suture then, you're on the temporal process. So it's named after what it's attaching to. If you're behind the suture, you're on the temporal bone, you'd be on the zygomatic process because it's attaching to the zygomatic bone. So if you just look for that suture, you can figure out on the zygomatic arch whether you are on the temporal bone um, or the zygomatic bone and whether it's the temporal process or the zygomatic process. So in front of the suture, you're on the zygomatic bone, it's the temporal process. If you're behind the suture, you're on the temporal bone, it's the zygomatic process. If you come down here, you have the mandible. All right, the mandible has several different structures you have to know. You have the body. Where it turns, it forms an angle. That's the angle. This is the ramus. It comes up and it forms a process in the front and in the back. Um, if you think about what I mentioned in lab, if you have me for lab, then we talked about how your TMJ forms here at your temporal mandibular joint, temporal mandibular, and it's a joint. People who have TMJ issues, they avoid things that are very chewy. And so when I think about things that are chewy, the first thing that comes to mind is like gum and candy. And so candy 
C-A-N-D-Y, looks kind of like Condy, C-O-N-D-Y. This is known as your condylar process, C-O-N-D-Y, condylar. This one up here is the other one that gets, I like to say, annoyed, noid. So it's coronoid. This is your coronoid. Don't call it a coracoid. Your coracoid process is going to be on your scapula. And it's that one letter makes a difference. Stick with an N, it's coronoid here. Coracoid process is on the scapula. All right, um, looking here, you have vomer coming up the middle, your inferior nasal conchi with these little wings here. Looking at the mouth, the very back portion here is palatine or palatine. That's this portion. You have a styloid process that you have to know. It's on the temporal bone, but it would be down here. This lady has broken off, but it would be right there. It's a very pointy looking toothpick type process. Your mastoid process is going to be this one here, right behind the ear. So that's on the temporal bone also. Your occipital condyles are here. So they're going to articulate with the vertebrae. All right, so your C1 would articulate right here. And Trying to think if there's anything else you guys need to know. You have your teeth that you have to know. All right. So always start from the front tooth here. You're going to identify this one as an eye, so it's incisor, incisor. Um, then you're going to get here to your canine or cuspid. Your next two are going to be bicuspid, bicuspid, or premolar, premolar. And then you have three molars, molar, molar. And then this one has an impacted molar. So you can kind of sort of see it on this side. Right there, see it? The impacted molar. And so that would be the wisdom tooth. All right, so it's going to help us identify that this person's um, probably in their early 20s. And then you can also figure that out by the sutures because they're not they're not fusing together very well. All right. Um, but as far as our lab, that's about the gist of it. That's what you have to worry about. So hopefully you know this one. Um, if there's anything I left off, refer back to like page nine of your lab manual and, and kind of look up that structure there and, and um, find it. So I hope you guys are studying for this midterm. See you later.